Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Malachi Cowtipper bringing you another game of StarCraft 2. This will be my second cast of the night, and I'm just in a really good casting mood, so I'm finally going to do something other than ZVP. As much as I like ZVP, time to move on to something else. My opponent will be Wong, who is number one in his Platinum League. So going in here, I preloaded the map this time so you won't have to hear a lot of jambling about it, but here we go. So Malachi Cowtipper as the Red Zerg in the... 12.31 o'clock position on Lost Temple versus Wong, who will be representing the Blue Zerg down here in the 6.30 position on Lost Temple. So, very, very far spawn distance apart from the two of us right off the bat. It takes a long time, even with Zerglings, before they have their speed upgrade to get over here. This is about as big as the map gets, maybe aside from, like, Shakuras Plateau, which is just ridiculous. I mean, if you're cross positions on Shakuras, just forget any type of early rush, or at least it seems like that, you know, maybe before Reapers got the really bad nerf, and let's pull the income right away, because this is going to be the key deciding factor inside of this game, you're going to see two very different Zerg plays, so keep an eye on the Harvester tab right here to see what's going on, and you'll see that we'll be pretty even throughout a better part of the game, he jumps right to 10 supply, and then builds his Overlord, I build my OV at 9, go to 10, so just differences in playstyle right here. Here come my two workers. I'm gonna be followed by his two workers. Probably three workers right there, so. Now, saying out my scout, I see his overlords coming from over there, so that immediately tells me we're cross positions. Now, hearing that we're cross positions in this map makes me very, very happy, and you can see that we're both at 13 out of 13 at about the same time. I just prefer to build my OV at 9, because I feel like it doesn't supply cap me for quite as long, and I don't like the gas trick, because then it leaves you an awkward mineral, and you're always waiting for that one more mineral, but both sending out our scouting drones almost equal in time, sending out this overlord over here, got this overlord over here. I'm going to park it right over here. I love doing this, because you can see when they expand, you can see what they're building, see their army composition, so I run my my worker in here, and you guys should do this, going to sit here and be like, yo, what's up, guys? He realizes that, and he's going to be like, well, let's attack this guy. Right there. My worker manages to get out. He's like, see you suckers later. But I did manage to kept his, catch his spawning pool, and he managed to catch what I'm going to do down here. So he actually delayed this by a little bit. And seeing that his spawning pool is already down caused me to deviate a little bit from the build. I dropped my spawning pool down, but I'm going to be going for a fast expand. You can see he's sitting his drone right here because he knows I'm going to fast expand. I had a late spawning pool. He saw that. He's not an amateur. Not an amateur Zerg, and here we go. Attacking right here. I'm going to try to drive him away, and he's just microing him around. He's not going to go too far away because he doesn't want to let me drop that, so I've got my second worker in here, and I'm actually going to turn him around and use the second worker to hopefully help push this back. So right now, I am up two harvesters. See that the spawning pool probably just popped. Mine getting really, really close to coming in down there. And Mr. Wong, what are you saving your minerals for? So I didn't pre-watch this replay, so I'm not quite sure what he's doing right now. He was too busy focused on microing over there, that's what he was doing. So there goes the queen, and we're going to see that followed by another tech structure pretty quickly. So I'm throwing down my roach worn, and he'll be throwing down a roach worn very soon. So the reason I threw down this roach worn is he knows that I have a fast expand, which makes me somewhat vulnerable, and to me that means that if he's going to try to do a Zergling push, I'm going to need a decent number of roaches to hold that off. As much as I would love to just pump drones, you got you can't leave yourself open, especially if he knows where you are, where cross positions. You can see how long it takes these lings to get here. So he's rushing out with six lings. If we would have been right here, he would have almost been at my front door already. That's just giving me time. Let's check out the production right here. Producing two more Zerglings, Overlord, a Queen. And there we go. I've got enough Zerglings to turn this back right now. Two more coming out, and he realizes, I'm not going to win, I'm not going to throw my Zerglings away, let's go right back here to the income. I'm actually up 16 to 15, and he's got a second queen on the way, sitting on a lot of money, I don't know if I agree with that, but, you know, he's got three larvae there, I'm not really, seven larvae, I don't know what he's saving his money for, it's just so weird, like I look at myself and just low, low money, spending that all the time, and there we go, there pops the lair, and he will be using up some of those drones right there. 15 to 16 on the harvester count. And right here, now that I've got my second base up, I've got a queen on this base right here. I'm building a queen over here. My income, as long as I continue to pump drones, and my number of larvae is just going to skyrocket. So the reason why I like this build so much is getting the second expansion down. I don't care what anyone says, it takes an obscenely long time to build an expansion. Whether you're a Terran, a Protoss, a Zerg. Like, if I wait 
and you can see normally I like to have this up around the 5 minute 30 mark, a little bit earlier, maybe even at like the 4.30 mark, but if you wait, being that it takes like a minute and a half to build this, by the time you actually want that expansion up and you're going to start pumping drones for it, it just feels like it's too late. You're like, wow, I'm half mined out up here. I should have done something earlier. So 19 to 14 harvesters, you can see that he's putting down a second spawning hatchery up here. I just, I don't understand what's the point of that hatchery. It's not like he knows that I have an overlord sitting over here, but he's obviously planning one base plane. If you look, he's got his lair up already. I'm not even thinking lair. I'm thinking drone 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 22 to 18 you check out the army composition right here dead even as far as that goes and he's gonna start pumping military units and he's putting up that second hatchery because he wants to be able to get a lot of units up on the field but there's no reason that hatchery couldn't be down here by your expansion because you're gonna need to build it there anyway you're not gonna long distance mine and this is actually very key and this is what tips me off to what he's doing without scouting I see this overseer here now you need an overseer I mean you need to have a layer to have an overseer so anytime I see a zerg tech to something like that that quickly to me that basically means that hey I'm gonna be going fast muta that's because that is exactly what he's doing that's exactly what's going through my head right now but looking at this his saturation is so light for these bases he doesn't have enough workers on minerals he's got him going on gas which is what you would expect for someone going that heavy of a build but I'm kind of assuming once this hatchery is up right here is when he's going to start pumping down a lot more workers. My overlord over here has let me know that I don't see any creep, I don't see an expansion. 33 to 23, you know, as long as I don't fall to an early push, you check out what I'm doing right here. Not on that one right now, but I've got a queen right here, two queens there, a queen there. I'm just going to be pumping queens, and as soon as this is done, I'm going to be throwing up another queen right there. There goes a spore crawler. I threw down an evil chamber purposely for the sake of getting three spore crawlers at each, each base so that overseer just I don't know what it was but my game sense tingled enough where I'm like this there's gonna be an air push and I figure if I have two or three queens at each base with a few spore crawlers that air push is literally going to mean nothing because I know he has not expanded over here I've got overlord no long has overlords positioned all over the map so great overlord positioning I'm really not doing anything of that to speak this game and I kind of kept them back because I figured there's going to be mutas out so there's another queen right there and three queens down here I've got some lings some roaches we check out the army tab right here you know I've actually held spent him which is absolutely ridiculous how much money are you sitting on right now not that bad that's not horrible but there goes the mutas and five mutas he saved up got a lot of them right off the bat and more workers coming out go back to the income right here 22 harvesters now he's looking a lot better 16 16 that's right where it wants to be, but, you know, why couldn't that hatchery bend down here? I just don't quite understand. I'll put up, myself, I'll definitely put up a second spawning hatchery, but that's once the game gets rolling a little bit more. And here we go, those mutas are going to be picking off my overlord, so right here I'm moving my queens up. One, three queens at the main to protect any tech structures, three spore crawlers, and, you know, a queen down here. He's going to snipe a few overlords, going to supply cap me, but I'm going to manage to pick off. Nope, he gets all the mutas out right there. That one is him with five health, but these five mutas, what are they going to do? They literally will not make a difference in this game unless he gets a lot of them right now. And one base muta player, if you're a Zerg player, you basically can't do one base muta. You will not have enough gas. You're only going to be producing two or three mutas a minute at best, if even that. And it only takes a few spore crawlers and a queen to counter you know, low numbers of mutas. So he's going to rush these guys around here because he knows I have that fast expand. There go four overlords getting that gas up. And the spore crawl over here is going to pick away at these mutas, do such, such high damage against these mutalisks, double their range, you know, really good fast attack speed, having that queen down there. I've got all my queens just chilling up here, 38 to 28, so even my, you know, there we go, 46, that's some massive upage in drones. So right around that 50 drone mark, you're doing pretty good, because if you figure that if you've got 16 per mineral patch, that puts you at 32, and then you know, an extra 12 for gas, you should realistically need about 44 to get good saturation, but if you've got about 50, that means you've got a few extra workers on each one of your mineral patches right here. She got some very good saturation, so decent number of mutas in play, but still no expansion from him. As you can see, he's gas starved. You know, he's not even bothering to build blings. He's got a little wall up with roaches here. got some spine crawlers going up. He really plans on beating me with this one base play, but... I've got my spore crawler back here, got my queens back here. His mutas just do not have a place to attack. And there goes an infestation pit on my part. I've got my spire up and running, so I'll be dropping some mutas. And what you'll be able to see from 